so I thought today it would be kind of fun and entertaining to talk to you about pest management and houseplants because anybody who owns plants eventually is going to have to deal with this. It's a normal thing. It doesn't mean you're bad at owning plants. It just happens. So I thought I would kind of try and make this as simple as possible. I've got four products that I use regularly. I'm going to kind of show you what those products are and then I'll do like a basic rundown of what I would do for each instance of the common houseplant pests that you would encounter. So for my four products, I recommend Mosquito Bits. I like using these and I usually get these on either Amazon or on like Home Depot's website. And I bought the large size. This has been lasting now. I'm probably like a year and a half into this. So this lasts a really long time. This one here, the Systemic Houseplant Insect Control. This I have to usually get from Amazon. I can never find this in my local stores, but this is something that I use constantly to kind of prevent issues. So, I mean, once you see the issue, you can still use this, but this is more to prevent it from getting out of control. The next product I'm gonna show you is insecticidal soap. And this one just comes from Home Depot or Lowe's. Usually you can just get it in store. You don't have to order it or wait. And then last, which is probably my favorite or the thing I reach for the most if I have an issue, is Captain Jack's Dead Bug. And I just buy it pre-mixed. Um, that way I don't have to worry about diluting it or anything. It's probably more affordable if you buy it concentrate and mix it. But this is easier for me. You don't have to mess with measurements. Okay, so now that I've showed you these four things, some other things you can use, rubbing alcohol um, with a Q-tip, things like that, but these are like the main items that I use. So first pest that probably everyone has encountered or is dealing with now if you're a houseplant person, fungus gnats. Um, and they are just, it'll be like, a, it seems like a fruit fly almost, like a small fly, you'll just notice them around the house. And it comes from having soil that stays damp too long, which you can help prevent by letting your plants dry out more. But for certain plants, like I have a lot of calathea or prayer plants, things in that family that really don't want to dry out. So I go ahead and I use these mosquito bits for that. And what I will do with these, I go to Walmart, I buy the cheapest like nylon stockings they have and cut them up into pieces and make little tea bags. So I'll put maybe like a tablespoon or two worth of this into a little pouch of stocking. Just close it with a rubber band. And then I'll throw it in a gallon of water, just in a gallon jug. Let it sit overnight, and then I water my plants with that. And as long as you're consistent with that, it'll really cut down the numbers, um, even almost get rid of them. I've never used the yellow sticky traps, so I can't really talk about how effective they are. But this, as long as you are consistent with the use, will work really well. Another thing that you can use for the fungus gnats, this systemic will help kill the fungus gnat larva in the soil as well. So I kind of like the one-two punch of this keeps things under control for me with the fungus gnats. Now, something else that I have dealt with is spider mites, and this is the plant right here I'm going to show you. This is my Calathea rufa barba, and this is the one that I found spider mites on and has had the most issues. So when I find the spider mites, the first thing I'm gonna do, and this goes for almost all of the pests you'll find, I take a bag and I cover up the soil to kind of protect the soil, keep it from falling out of the pot, but also to keep any pests from falling into the soil. So I will cover it up like that. If it's a larger pot, you might have to tape it. And then what I'm gonna do is manually rinse the leaves with water. So if it's a small plant like this, once I have it covered and secured, what I'll do is I'll just tip it upside down and I will use a little hose on the bottom. So you can either use a shower head, a sink hose, or I have like a handheld sprayer. And you're gonna hose off the backs of the leaves especially and then the fronts and stuff too. But this way you can tip it right upside down and they'll all fall off and not into the soil. They will fall into the sink and be washed away. So after I've done that part, then you can remove the bag. If it's spider mites, I like to use the Captain Jacks. 
and I will just saturate front and back of the leaf and I'll actually do a layer on top of the soil too just in case anything did fall in. And then I'll do this probably every four or five days when it's a bad, when it, like when I first found them. Now I just do it every couple of weeks when I'm checking them. So I'm the type of person that takes all my plants to the sink to water them because I like to let the water run through. And then about, I don't know, maybe once or twice a month, I will do a good wipe down of all the leaves. And this is what helps me keep pests from getting bad. You catch them early, it's really manageable. So I will take the plants to the sink and then while I'm waiting for them to drip dry, I will just mist the leaves and wipe every leaf down on the plants that can handle that. And then the plants that have too many leaves, like where you can't manually wipe every leaf, especially when they're furry, I will just spray them off and go from there. So that is what I would do with spider mites. Um, I think I have had one or two thrips. That is kind of what prompted me to get into the whole systemic thing. So I wanted to try and catch it early, stop it, and I only found one or two, and then I couldn't find any more, so I think I'm okay. But for them, what I did, that's when I started using this hardcore. So this I will put a couple of spoonfuls into the top of the pot, just sprinkle it on the top of the soil, and then you water it in. And it lasts for about two months. Um, don't use this if you're going to be having your plants outdoors, because if they flower, or if other things get into them, this can kill beneficial pollinators like bees and stuff. So this is for indoor plants only. And then also keep in mind that if it was a non-toxic plant, using this is gonna add some level of toxicity. I don't know the amount, but just keep in mind that if you had a plant like a Calathea or like my money tree here, I don't use it on that because that one's down low. And if a leaf fell off, I don't want Jordan to eat it. So I only use this when I know the plant is up out of reach. So just keep that in mind also. And that's what I did with the thrips. I didn't do any spraying with them because like I said, I only found the two and I manually killed them. And then I went ahead and treated with systemic and just checked everybody, but I didn't find any more. Now things like mealybugs, I will also use the systemic to help with them. Mealybugs and scale are kind of falling in the same category for me. I will do manual removal and systemic I've not had much luck with the sprays, keeping that stuff under control. Um, mostly, like I said, manual removal, which removes, is a, which means that I can't talk today, which means I use a Q-tip and I will go in and scrape each one off by hand and then I'll follow up with this. And then I just keep a little reminder on my phone to let me know like every two months during the growing season, especially to apply this, reapply it. And then let's see, aphids. I have found that Captain Jack's and insecticidal soap each work about equally well against aphids. And then of course, again, with the systemic, that'll help keep them gone. I was having issues with them with my string of bananas. They seem to like succulent plants for me. So I had a wax ivy and string of pearls and string of bananas have all been the plants that have had issues with aphids and I started off by rinsing the plant, like I said. Then I would follow up with one of these sprays and I have alternated to kind of see if it makes a difference. I'm more comfortable with this one because this one has no smell or no feel to it, where this one leaves kind of like a soapy feeling residue. And then I know that a lot of people love neem oil, but I, I have never had good luck with it. I can get past the smell if something's gonna work, so that's inconsequential. What did it for me was I had a cactus that I thought was getting rust or scale or something and I tried using it and it made the plant super photosensitive so the whole thing just burned and fell apart and I lost it. So I haven't really used neem oil since then. I just, I found good, good luck with using these products and that seemed to have worked for me. So aphids, like I said, uh, manual removal with water spray, very easy to get rid of them. Follow up with some kind of a spray. And then I did treat with systemic. And fingers crossed, this was about maybe eight months ago. I haven't had them back yet. So fingers crossed that this, um, this little regimen here will keep 
them at bay. So that is what I do for pest control. If there's any I didn't mention, it's just because there's things that I haven't dealt with, things like I've heard of white, white flies and things like that, but I've never had experience with them. I do get springtails sometimes in the saucer, and it took me a bit to realize what they were, but they're not detrimental to your plant. They're kind of something that feeds on decomposing matter in the soil. And then I think that one of the ways that I narrowed it down was because they were never on the leaves. They were only in the saucers or at the bottom of the plant pot. It was never like in the top of the soil or the leaves. That's what narrowed it down for me. So those guys, when I see them, I kind of just leave them. But like I said, real quick, mosquito bits, insecticidal soap, Captain Jack's and Systemic are the things that I use. And if you could only pick one, I think I would probably go with the Captain Jack's as long as you are using it regularly to keep up. Um, but if you could only, I would pick, if you could only pick the one, yes. But I think that if you needed to keep it cheap, these are the best two. Because this will take care of fungus gnats. This will take care of mealybugs and scale to help, help cut them back. It doesn't work for spider mites. They're not listed as one of the pests. I don't know why. I think it must be the way that they feed on the plant is different compared to the other pests. But by using these two, you can get rid of pretty much all of them. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions about things that I didn't mention or something that you need a little more info on, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.